<clears throat> Good evening. My name is Llewellyn. I want to thank you to my channel. Welcome you. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. And let's get going on June Hunt's Domestic Violence, A Self and a Woman's Workbook. It says, Steps to Solution. His arms once sweetly embraced you. They now swing wildly toward you. His arms once tenderly held you. They now severely harm you. You feel devastated, distraught, and devalued. As a victim of domestic violence, you feel submerged in pain, both physically and emotionally. You are traumatized and terrorized by a man who fails to heed this command of God. Ephesians 5.25 says, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for you. It should be for her. His arms were where you once saw protection. Now they terrify you. But there are other arms, strong arms, opening wide to you, longing to hold you, wanting to convey your worth. To God, you are his precious lamb. He wants to lead you like a shepherd to a place of peace. Turn to him. Ask for his help. Seek his wisdom about the scheming wolf in your life. Find refuge and rest in his loving arms. In Isaiah 40, 11, it says, He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. The woman who sincerely wants to please God, but who is not grounded in the word of God, can become captive to an incorrect understanding of biblical submission. She associates submission with accepting abuse, believing it's her call as a wife to suffer through kicks and punches, but nothing could be further from the heart of God, who never approves a husband's abuse. One key to correcting the confession is seeing scripture in light of its content. <clears throat> Sorry. Of its context. Yes, the Bible reads in Ephesians 5.22, wives submit to your husbands. But it also reads, husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church. Which is a clear mandate for husbands to treat their wives with compassion and tender care. Here are three helpful steps for examining scriptures accurately and contextually. Number one, look at the surrounding verses. Number two, look at the purpose of the passage or book in which the verse is found. And number three. Look at the whole counsel of God's word on submission and love. So I do apologize. I'm trying to find. Here we go. It says how to know whether he has really changed. Habitual patterns of abusive behavior rarely change unless there is a significant intervention professional guidance, or both. Sometimes, however, an abuser becomes so convicted of his harmful ways that the Lord is moved to give the person a new heart, new desires, and the power to change. If your mate promotes this, that change has occurred, or if your mate promises that change has occurred, you need wisdom to discern whether the change is only temporary and manipulative or whether your husband is truly taking personal responsibility for his abusive behavior. As you seek to determine the genuineness and reliability of your mate's professed changes, ask yourself three questions. Oh, these questions. I'm only going to do a few. We don't need, there's, a, there's like a long list here, guys. I'm just going to do a few. Do I no longer have a sense of fear when I'm with him? Does he respect my right to disagree? That's a good one. Do I feel that I'm being treated with respect? Does he share his heart with me? Does he respect my need for other relationships? I'm not talking, and I don't know she's not either, about a romantic relationship. We're talking family relationship, kid relationship, friends relationships, those kind of relationships. So the scripture is clear about the husband's role. In Colossians 3.19, it says, Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. It 
if you're experiencing domestic violence, you need to draw a line in the sand. Men need to know that their abuse will not be tolerated and that if the line is crossed, repercussion will follow. Perhaps she will leave the home with the children or the police will be notified or their pastor will be called on or he will be helped out of the house by certain men. Just as important as drawing a line in the sand is this. Ensure that the boundary doesn't get blurred by compromises or by a weak will with which you cannot enforce the boundary. The only way to prevent abuse in the future is to stop it in the present. What you say you will do, you must do every time. Or the cycle of abuse will rage on. The following scripture reflects God's perfect will regarding violence. Isaiah 60, 18. No longer will violence be heard in your land. The following is an acrostic of the word boundaries. As you begin laying a firm foundation for building healthy boundaries, begin a new way of thinking about yourself, about God, and about abuse. God loves you and created you in his image. Abuse is a sin against God's creation because God did not create you to be abused. Don't think that abuse is normal. Line up your thinking with God's thinking. So here's a question that says, I know that I need to leave my abusive husband and establish boundaries with him, but how do I present the boundaries to him without putting myself at risk? And the answer is this, all important is what you say and how you say it with compassionate strength. At a time when your relationship is stable and peaceful, approach him. If you do not feel safe approaching him alone, ask someone you both respect to be with him. And then you tell him, I love you and want our marriage to work. If we could have the best relationship possible, would you want it? Just as there are penalties for crossing boundary lines in sports, there are penalties for crossing boundary lines in marriage. And you've crossed a boundary line in our marriage. I absolutely will not live with an abusive person. Therefore, I decide to leave and take the children with me. Ultimately, you will decide whether we reconcile our marriage. And I will know what your decision is by your actions toward me. Those are really good. So enlist reinforcements. Battles on the home turf can turn into a full-scale war when an abused woman chooses to leave. It is vital that you surround yourself with an army of people who will support and protect or help protect you. You must also devote the necessary time to make critical preparations, you know, legally, financially, etc. For independent living, recognize and understand that threats of harm can escalate when an abuser realizes that his mate is finally going to take decisive action. That is why comprehensive preparation as well as support and help from friends, friends, families, counselors, pastors, and even legal authorities are desperately needed. Never attempt to leave the abuser by yourself. Above all, seek refuge in the arms of your deliverer, asking him to guide and protect you as your attempt to march away from the war zone. Violent outbursts can occur at any time. A violent spouse may enter a blind rage when he discovers a different dynamic in the relationship. He begins to fear losing control of you and losing the family. The greatest danger comes when he learns his mate has intentions of leaving. A person who is wise will have prepared for the worst by having a safety plan for leaving. Proverbs 22.3, a prudent person sees danger and takes refuge. So make sure that you have an escape route. Make sure that you have a list of phone numbers that you may need for emergencies, you know, like local hospitals, police, women's shelter, uh, maybe an attorney, work phone number, church number, things like that. Make sure you share your seriousness of your situation with trustworthy people. And you need to teach your children safety secrets. Uh, for instance, teach them how to call the police, teach them how to call for help, things like that. Place physical evidence or violence with a trusted confidant or in a safety deposit box. Keep important papers and documents easily accessible and together in one place. And cover your bases before leaving. 
Even if an abused woman no longer lives under the same roof with her abuser, she may not be out of harm's way. Finding opportunities to inflict harm become more challenging for abusers, but some are relentless in their pursuit for revenge. Safety can be a constant challenge for you, whether alone or in a crowd, at home, at work, in a subway, or in a car. There is comfort to be found behind locked doors and bolted windows, but those aren't available in public places. So how do you live without fear and a sense of constant vulnerability? Thankfully, safety steps can help reduce the risk of further abuse, but never fail to remember that the Lord God Almighty, not your abusive husband, is sovereign over your life. Seek refuge in him. Sadly, many abused women are so beaten down that they feel powerless to do anything to free themselves from the bondage they mistakenly believe is unbreakable. In truth, it is not only their abusers who keep them in bondage, but also their own passivity rooted in fear and insecurities. They choose to stay in abusive relationships rather than defiant, definitely, defiantly act to bring about an end to their violent home life. But today, unlike them, you can choose differently. Through the legal system and other strong community support networks, you can begin developing a plan to break the cycle of abuse once and for all. Do not believe the lies that you have to stay or endure abuse or that no one can or wants to help you. Help is available from those around you and from the one above you. So Romans 13, 3 and 4 says, Rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong, do what is right and he will commend you. For he is God's servant to do you good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword for nothing. He is God's servant, an agent of wrath, to bring punishment in to, on to the wrongdoer. So that's it for now. That is the end of the book. Um, again, it's called Domestic Violence, Assault on a Woman's Worth by June Hunt. This is also the Hope of the heart series. I hope you've enjoyed this book. Uh, there's a lot more in there. I skipped over a lot. It's almost like redundant, but it's really worth reading, really worth reading. And if it, if you want to hear more on these things, please leave a message, a comment below and let me know. I'll be more than happy to see if I can find others like her. I will be starting a six week program that is actually um, Bible based. It's called Understanding Verbal and Emotional Abuse. It's a Bible study book. I will be starting that here um, probably early March. If anyone is interested, let me know. And we will be doing a Facebook six week on this. And I will make sure that you get the books if you don't have it, or I will copy it and make sure you guys have it that way too. I thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. And remember that there is peace after abuse. As a former abuse victim myself, I can promise you there is. So for right now, I thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Please leave comments below and let me know how else I can help you. Remember that God loves you. Have a great night.